In one way or another, inequality has been a fixture of the American experience since the first slave was delivered here in 1619. But the manifestation of inequality we're living with in the U.S. today has largely been this way since the 1970s. Why has inequality been such an inseparable part of the American fabric? Most scholars would agree that after World War II ended in 1945, the following two decades were, at least in terms of income distribution, some of the most equitable the U.S. had experienced. But the 1970s saw a change in the distribution of income that gave the higher income end a fat tail, meaning that the highest earners were getting more than a proportional share of the income. Three reasons are identified for why the distribution of income started shifting against the poorest. First, family structures. In 2018, a married household made 2.3 times the median income of households headed by single women. The percentage of households with that quality has nearly doubled since the 1970s. Also, technological change. More jobs today require undergraduate education, and this is creating an intellectual wage gap that seems to be widening, especially in cities. Third, tax policy. Reagan's 1981 personal income tax cuts, as well as the Bush cuts of the early 2000s, and more recently the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, are all likely contributors to keeping the after-tax distribution of income unequal and arguably have made it unequal relative to tax policies of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And while not necessarily a reason for why income inequalities become worse, it's important to note that some conservative scholars argue that the Census Bureau's methodology for calculating the U.S. distribution of income or its Gini coefficient are imprecise and misleading. There's also a case to suggest that after-tax redistribution including tax refunds for the poor, should be considered in measures of income and make the inequality in the distribution better. That's important to note because ultimately the distribution of income informs a lot of how we come to understand and appreciate definitions of poverty, which we'll talk about next.